Pop. Jim, thank you. The officials are Danny Crawford, Jack Knees, and Terry Durham. Bob, I think the thing to watch here earlier, what are the matchups going to be? Reggie Miller told us yesterday that he was going to guard Kobe Bryant, but let's see how the Lakers match up against the Pacers. L.A. puts it in the hands of Ron Harper. Glenn Rice for three. Left all alone on the game's first possession. He's the best three-point shooter over the course of the season that the Lakers have, but he couldn't hit that one. Now, Indiana loves to establish Rick Smith's early. Let's see if they go to him in the post against Shaquille. Miller runs off the screen. Harper is on him. Here is Smiths with the jump hook. That's an air ball into the hands of A.C. Green. Ron Harper finds Shaq. He's double teamed, his pass deflected, and stolen by Dale Davis. Mark Jackson pushes it up the floor, finds Jalen Rose. And the Pacers take a 2-0 lead. Big basket there for Jalen Rose. He must get off to a good start. Early in the playoff box, he has struggled where he's drifted early in games and tried to get going later, and it's been too late for the Pacers in many instances. Miller's on Bryant. Covid to the baseline. Here's his turnaround to tie the game. What a tough shot. Bryant is guarding Mark Jackson, at least at the outset. Rose comes off the pick for the jumper. And O'Neal claims the rebound. Pass in the lane to Glenn Rice on the game's first whistle. We have some really good matchups out there. Jalen Rose and Glenn Rice. Jalen's going to have to do a good job chasing Rice around screens. That time he tried to get a quick post up. And Rose has got to stay out of foul trouble. They need him out there on the floor. Here's Bryant. And now Harper. Looking for Shaq. Who takes it in deep. And you can't stop that. Cannot let him foul. Get, get the basket and the foul. Little interchange underneath the basket, and the Pacers got confused. Now watch as Shaq steps over, and Dale Davis allows him to get right in front of him. And we talked about when he gets it that deep, you can't get into the double team. Shaq finishes it, and he gets the foul. A strange bounce to complete the three-point play. He's now hitting right at 50% in the playoffs. You he made two huge free throws with two and a half minutes to go to tie the game against Portland on Sunday in a clutch situation. Reggie Miller on the move. Misses off the glass, but Dale Davis is there to follow. He is their best rebounder. You must block him off that offensive backboard. Bryant. They're looking for O'Neal. Harper has it knocked away into the hands of A.C. Green, whose jumper is off. The rebound squirts out of bounds, and they award the ball to Indiana. Dale Davis very fortunate there that he did not get an over-the-back foul. Knocked that ball loose, and the Pacers get it. But, Bob, I think if there's one thing you have to really watch, the Pacers are not a good rebounding team. The Lakers an excellent offensive rebounding team. Mark Jackson off to Reggie Miller, and now Smiths will try the jump hook again. Davis on the offensive glass. Miller for three. It rattles out, and the rebound is poked out, touched last by Dale Davis. You were talking about pace and rebounding. Davis is averaging 12 a game in the playoffs, but their next highest rebounder, Jalen Rose, is only around four. Davis doesn't have much help. Smiths is 7-4, but he's not a good rebounder. That's why you've got a team rebound. All five guys on the floor have got to go to the board. You can't leak out looking for the fast break. Shaquille O'Neal showing early signs of just overpowering the Pacers in the paint. If you get to him late, you cannot stop him. Mark Jackson came down there, the little bump, and Shaq just finished it. Mark Jackson around Bryant, and Kobe fouled him. 
So much of Shaq's effectiveness is where he catches the ball. The quick spin move, he gets deep in the lane. Mark Jackson a little slow getting down there, and then he just punishes him with that elbow. He steps through. So if you're going to come down double team, you got to get there quickly and force him to pass that ball out. The Pacers are a great free throw shooting team. One of the best all-round shooting teams in the league. Any way you break it down, two-point field goal percentage. They've got a slew of guys who can hit the three. Jackson makes one of two. They've started just two of seven from the floor in this game. I think if the Pacers are going to win, there's two areas they have to win. They have to win the battle of the free throw line, and more importantly, they have to win the battle of that three-point line decisively. Shaquille O'Neal way out high. Harper. It's very difficult for Rick Smith to play any kind of screen roll action. When he has to show out, he's normally a half step late. The Lakers know that, and they're going to that. Miller into Smith. Another try. He's 0 for 3 with that same move, but he can get it off against O'Neal. Well, he's had great shots. He's just got to finish. AC Green. And the NBA's Iron Man, who last missed a game in November of 1986, hits that one to give them a six-point lead. I think he's happy not to see Rasheed Wallace, Chris Webber, and all the forwards from Phoenix. Now it's the jumper for Smith, and that works better than the hook. He has got to continue to shoot the basketball. They've got to keep Shaquille busy. They can't let him just stay back there in the paint and roam on the defensive end. Bird knows that. That's why he's already got four shots at the basket. Here's Rice, guarded by Rose. Off to Green, five seconds to shoot, and AC can't make it two in a row. Jackson will push it up the floor. Dale Davis, his turnaround jumper rattles out. That's really not his game. He can get it off against AC Green, but that's really not part of his repertoire. Here's Harper to the left hand on the run. Count the basket and bring it to the line. Ron Harper has been terrific in the playoffs. And more importantly, the deeper we're getting into the playoffs, the better he is playing. Against Portland, he was terrific. Ron Harper not known now for his quick full raise to the basket. A little off-the-leg runner with his left hand. The foul, an opportunity for a three-point play. But Ron Harper, Bob, I thought was a real key in that Portland series. Big baskets. The things he did, and remember in that game seven, he had a couple shots early. I thought really settled his team down, gave him some confidence. Kobe Bryant says of Harper, he knows where to hide in the offense and sneak some of those open shots. Smith's from the head of the key. He has that kind of range, and now after missing his first three, he's hit two straight. We, we've said over and over in the playoffs, the team that can cause Shaq some problems are a team that has a big man that can step out and shoot. Well, Rick Smith and Sam Perkins can both do that. Kobe Bryant. You have no shot blocking, and the Lakers know that. Remember now when they played against Portland, you had some long, rangy athletes back there changing shots. Just right to the basket for Kobe. Reggie Miller with the catch and shoot that rattles out. O'Neal forces up a jumper, bad shot, into the hands of Davis. Mark Jackson finds Smith, who looked for Davis. Jackson tries to save it. It winds up in Green's hands, but not for long. Off his fingertips and out of... Here's Bryant, who's hit all three of his field goal attempts. O'Neal juggles it, recovers. Not only hits the basket, but as you were saying, Doug, once he's in that deep, it's almost impossible to wrap him up, and any foul only contributes to a three-point play possibility and to getting the Pacers' front line into foul trouble. Well, how about the agility of Shaquille O'Neal? It was a tough pass. He goes down and gets it, juggles it, and then finds the handle finally and finishes it. When you look at the Indiana Pacers, they're not a team that has great depth on that front line. You're talking about a Dale Davis, a Smith. You come in with Perkins. Other than that, they don't have the big bodies to be able to waste those kind of fouls. They have to be very careful with that. 
The foul was Smith's first. Miller has missed his first four field goal attempts. Here he is on the move, trying the reverse, make it 0 for 5, and Rice picks it up. Bryant tried to lob it for Shaq, and Davis swatted it down. Ron Harper's done a real nice job here early against Reggie Miller. Now remember, they go back to playing in the seventh game, or excuse me, the series in uh, when it was Chicago and Indiana when the Eastern Conference Finals a couple years ago. So these two guys know each other very well. Harper's doing a good job on him right now. AC Green. Mark Jackson has the rebound. Reggie against Kobe, falling, he flings it out to Jackson, now Jalen Rose, Jackson, back to Smiths, Mark Jackson on the offensive glass, beautiful basketball though, Mark Jackson penetrates, Shaq's waiting there, and what he does, he finds Smiths, now although Smiths missed the jumper, Mark Jackson right there to finish up on the offensive rebound. O'Neal, a little fade away. Wow, how good was that footwork? It looked like he was going to shoot a jump hook in the lane. He spun out and shot a fading jump shot on the baseline. And he scored nine. Good start for him. Jalen Rose. Shaq has the rebound, and here comes Kobe Bryant. Stutter stepping, spinning. His shot blocked by Smiths, and Smiths recovers it. But his pass is deflected and stolen by Rice. The rim is open. Reggie Miller still hasn't hit one. He's 0 for 6. He's had about five really good shots and rattled about four of them in and out. He's got to continue to shoot it. We know he will. Switch. Here's Shaq for the jumper from the big line that beats the shot clock and establishes a 12-point lead at 26-14. He's already attempted six shots tonight, nine all of Game 7 against Portland into a great early rhythm as Rose turns the ball over. Bob, what I've seen here, what the Lakers are doing, they're getting the ball up the floor quickly, hitting Pacers with early offense, and the Pacers have not been able to double it. They tried the lob to Bryant, and it didn't work. Here comes Reggie Miller. Sam Perkins is in for Indiana. So is Austin Crozier. This is Crozier with the ball on the drive, and he was fouled. Robert Ory is in the lineup now for the Lakers, and he picked up the foul his first. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right, thanks, Bob. During that last time out, Larry Bird told us guys, hey, guys, you're doing all right. We're playing well. Everything's going to be fine. Some of these shots will start to go down. I'm not concerned about our offense, but guys, you've got to quit gambling on defense. Bob? Thanks, Jim. Austin Crozier, an 85% free throw shooter, misses the first. He's in his third year out of Providence. He played all of one minute in last year's playoffs, but he's become an important player this year for the Pacers. And you can already see the chess game here in game one. The moment Austin Crozier came in the game, Robert Ory came in the game to defend against him. Why? Because he's quicker and can get out on the floor better than A.C. Green. So you're starting to see what the coaches are thinking in their matchups. Ron Harper in deep to O'Neal. Harper's fourth assist. He's chipped in with five points as well. Well, we talked about it in our open. When he gets the ball that deep, it's too late. He will punish you. He's the most dominant player in the game. Off to a terrific start. He's got 13. His team leads by 13. And a whistle on the shot by Jalen Rose, and it's going against the Pacers. Austin Crozier with his first. Now look where Shaquille O'Neal is going to be right here. When he gets that ball in the painted area, you have no chance to defend him. More importantly, you can't get back and help. Sam Perkins has no chance. He's overpowered down on that low block. O'Neal's turnaround. Well, if he's going to hit that, in addition to overpowering you inside, you might as well wave the white flag of surrender. Austin 
Crozier with that quick first step, and Ori bodied him to pick up his second foul. The Lakers have come out and they said, you know what, we're going to go in, we're going to test to see what they're going to do defensively. We've seen a lot of single coverage, but more importantly, Shaquille is getting great position and he's getting the ball in great rhythm. Portland disrupted his rhythm. That is not happening here tonight. Folks, you can log on to NBA.com to follow tonight's Lakers-Pacers game with Sync TV, the ultimate online companion to each NBA Finals television broadcast. This unique component provides fans with real-time stats, polls, and the ability to interact with special guest hosts and other fans online. NBA.com, Sync TV, your cutting-edge way to follow the NBA Finals 2000. Not much going right for the Pacers, the league's best free-throw shooting team, and they're misfiring from there as well. Well, again, they, they have to shoot a high percentage from the line and behind that three-point line, and that's not happening right now. One-on-one -on -one coverage here with Shaq. Leaving Harper alone for three. It's all going right right now for the Lakers. They're just picking and choosing their spots, and Indiana is a good defensive team, but they don't have the quickness to rotate out to those shooters once they swarm Shaq. Mark Jackson. Backing in, slipping Bryant and scoring. And Kobe's playing him to try to take away that post up. Bryant from half court to beat the buzzer. And that's about the only thing that didn't work out in this first quarter. You think for a second, and I know you don't, Coach, that he's going to be daunted by this. You don't build a reputation as one of the great clutch shooters of all time in this league and then have your confidence shaken by missing a half dozen of them in one quarter. He will continue to fire. Couldn't agree with you more. And when we talked to him yesterday, he said that. He said, I'm in the NBA Finals. I'm going to go down shooting. If we're going to lose, I'm going to shoot the basketball. Now you've got Kobe matched up against Reggie here as we start the second quarter. Because Travis Best is in to run the point, replacing Mark Jackson, and Derek Fisher is guarding him, and Best gives them instant offense. He's just a little guy, only 5'11", but he's very adept at doing what you just saw him do. When confronted by a bigger defender, in this case the biggest Shaq, he can lob his shot high, and he's accurate with it. O'Neal out of the double to Rice. He's guarded by the veteran Derek McKee. Shaq finds Fox around the perimeter to Fisher, and Derek Fisher has his shot come out for him, and McKee takes the rebound. Crozier against Fox, into the paint, and scoring off the glass. Now he's going to remember when Rick Fox plays you in the post, he's not going to block your shot, he's going to try to strip you on the way up. So once he gets position, he's going to protect the ball just like he did that time. Lakers by 11. Bryant over Miller, and he traveled. Travis Best is in the game right now to do a couple things. First of all, to try to slow the ball coming up the floor, and secondly, to try to increase the tempo of the game, get some easy baskets. He's quick, he's strong, and as you said, Bob, he loves that little floater in the lane. In the first quarter, Indy, the best shooting team all round in the league, seven for 20. Lakers, 15 for 22. Sam Perkins misses the three, but Crozier is there. Very versatile player, Crozier. He has outside range on his jumper, quick first step, and after putting on 20 pounds lifting weights in the offseason, he's rugged enough to do some dirty work inside. Well, one of the reasons they traded Antonio Davis was they felt like Sam Perkins needed to play about 20 minutes, and they needed to get Crozier on the floor for things just like that. Backing down on Perkins, and it comes up short. In fact, he drew air with it. Sam Perkins driving on Shaq, and it looks like O'Neal fouled him. O'Neal backing in on Perkins. McKee there with the help, but it's not enough. I'm shocked that they allowed to, uh, Shaq to take two dribbles, turn, and lay that ball in the basket. Uh, they, can't, they cannot win this game if they give him those kind of baskets. He's already scored 17. Best on the move, and a Laker foul. Shaq gets the ball in the lane. You're going to see the one bounce, the two bounce. He picks it up. And look how close he is to the basket. He just muscles in and lays the ball in the basket. That's like a two-foot shot. And 
Well, I think we've seen as, as Shaq has played and scored those kind of uh, uh, baskets during the playoffs, he just wears down and demoralizes the opponent. Reggie Miller sits down. Jalen Rose is back in. Perkins for three. Travis Best gives them a fresh 24. Rose doesn't use much of it as he swishes one from beyond the arc. That's the strength of the Pacers and was come off an offensive rebound. Inside out, quick three by Rose. And they're within six. It's the Lakers who ask for time. 12 to 2 bench scoring, so the bench doing a good job. Bryant with the miss, O'Neal with the recovery, and he scored 19 points, and we still have seven and a half minutes to play in the second quarter. Now, Bird told us yesterday he didn't think they could win if Shaq was going to get 35 or more points. Well, he's on pace for over 40 right now. Perkins, Bryant on him on a switch. McKee has it poked away by Ori. Kobe's got it. O'Neal in the lane, feeling it now, up with the jumper. And Crozier takes the rebound. Best. Crozier delivers a splattering screen on Fisher. And now Terry Durham blows the whistle. This Crozier is a rugged customer. This was great, though, because Derek Fisher just tried to run into the screen and flop back and draw the attention. The referee would not bite on it. Then Crozier sees the mismatch, goes right into the post. Fisher locks him up, and he gets the foul. That was great uh, refereeing by Terry Durham there. And now Danny Crawford spots something. For offensive foul on Jalen Rose. Looks like his arms behind him and tried to lock in Kobe Bryant in the post. That will be his second foul. That's two on Rose, the Pacers' leading scorer this year, and voted the league's most improved player. First time Reggie Miller hasn't led Indiana in scoring since 1989. Bryant lays it off to Orr. The dribble penetration and the quickness of Kobe Bryant is really causing problems for the Pacer perimeter guys. When he gets in there, the back line steps up. He lays it off, and it's a layup or a dunk. And the lead is back to 10. As Best makes his move, there's another offensive foul on the Pacers. And it's Crozier's second. When you break down the defense and get it in the painted area, the back line has to step up, and when they do, Ori rolls right to the basket and finishes it off. Fox from Fisher. That was a beauty. Right now, their offense is totally in sync, and you know what? When you only play a team twice, east-west like these guys do, I think the Pacers are struggling to the rhythm right now, this triangle offense. They're gonna figure out Miller's back in for the Pacers. Rose with a running one-hander that doesn't fall. And Ori takes it for the Lakers. Well, look how quickly they're advancing the ball. Nobody has stopped it. They got it in the scoring area in 19 seconds. Only five seconds off the clock. O'Neal against the smaller Perkins. Now they surround him. He gets the ball, scores the basket, comes to the line. Larry Bird cannot be happy at the rhythm that they've allowed Shaquille O'Neal to get in here early in this half after being shackled by Portland with the swarming defense. Now they get back, but look, they give him enough space where he just goes up in between basically three defenders. You have got to get your body chest up against him. He gets a kind roll and a three-point play opportunity as, as Kobe Bryant checks out of the game, and now we finally see Brian Shaw. With Rick Smith's not in the game, and Shaq can't complete the three-point play, but Derek Fisher claims the rebound to Rice. Ori is there. Rice has it back, and he was fouled. Now we're starting to see the Lakers' offensive rebounding. Look at the team that the Pacers have on the floor. Dale Davis is a good rebounder, but they have a small team. All five guys must rebound. They give up a second shot off a Shaq, miss free throw, then Ori swoops in, finds Rice, who drives the ball right to the basket to draw the foul. Starter to say with Smith's not in the game, and now he checks back in. They had no one within three inches of Shaq in height, and obviously they have no one, Smith's included, anywhere near his bulk and strength.
Coverage of the French Open continues from 9 a.m. Pacific on NBC. Rice hits one of two. And the Lakers lead again by 15. Best working on Fisher. Misses badly on the run, and O'Neal takes it on the other side of the hoop. has the rebound. Jalen Rose for three. Well, that's a big basket right there. We're slipping away from the Pacers. Jalen Rose do, doing what the Pacers do best, early offense and shoot that quick three. Well, they shot over 18 threes a game this year. That's a big strength of their team. They've got to knock some shots in. Shot. Lost it on the way to the hoop. And Indiana touched it last. The Lakers will keep it no foul. Talking about early offense, watch the shot clock. You see how quickly it takes him to get the ball up the floor. And within five seconds, Rose has a three. Back line, Rice on the drive of the jam. His first field goal of the game, he scored three. I always talk about how you finish quarters and half. The Pacers need a strong finish here. They don't want to go in 16 or 18 down at half. That won't help as Smith's lost it. Shaw to his old Orlando teammate, O'Neal. Shaw's got it back. Now Fisher for three. Inside, outside, double. Short. Taken by Shaw. The Lakers have reestablished their biggest lead, 17. Indiana had whittled the first 17-point deficit back down to six. Now Rhodes has two fouls. Rice is trying to attack him to get the third. Instead, it's an offensive foul. And it's number two on Rice. It's made a conscious effort here to try to get Jalen Rose out of the ball game. They go right to Glenn Rice. You see that right arm pushes off. And Rose avoids his third foul. Smith screening for Rose. Now he has it back. Driving on O'Neal to the left hand. And a whistle on his move. The Pacers want a goaltending. But they're not going to get it. Instead, O'Neal is hit with his second foul. When you have to go out and close out on a shooter, you've got to be able to move your feet. You see the block up top, but Shaq had his hand riding him on his hip on the way to the basket. That's why you'll get a two-shot foul here. Smith, the 34-year-old from the Netherlands, Doug the Duncan Dutchman, hits the first. Travis Knight makes his first appearance in quite a while, replacing Shaq, who sits down with 21 points and seven rebounds. Now, in the regular season, the two games, Shaq got 53 field goal attempts, about 26 and a half a game. Tonight, already 14. So he's getting a shot attempt. More importantly, the Pacers aren't putting him on the free throw line. He shot only 11 free throws in the two games, so they have not fouled him in the two games this year either. That pass went astray, but there's a foul just as it does. It's number two on Smiths. Indiana has had an unusual postseason in that obviously they played well enough to reach the finals. They've also had some terrible games. Milwaukee led them by 31 points in two different games, both of which they won by 13 in round one. So they're susceptible to blowouts. 
Travis Knight, two seconds to shoot, and Knight misses long. Exactly a minute to play in the half. Austin Crozier. Wow, he has been really aggressive. They've gone to him in that low post, and whoever's guarded him, he's been able to get the advantage. What a big lift off the bench, Bob. He's been for these Pacers. He scored eight. Dwayne Rice. Travis Knight. I hate to tell you, but the Pacers are doing a, a terrible job on the defensive backboard right now. After getting off to a great start, the Lakers are now pounding him on the offensive board. And Crozier was pounded by Knight, but had the strength to finish the play. Austin Crozier, a big bright spot in an otherwise dreary first half for the Pacers. Well, there's the isolation this time against Robert Ory. He hangs in the air, fades, and makes a nice jump shot and follows it up with a great move to the basket and has the wherewithal to be able to finish. He's going to get the bump. And this is where you got to get greedy. Don't think two free throws, Frank. Think three-point play. He's the Pacers' leading scorer in the half now with 11. Now Smith's out of the game because they don't want him to get his third foul. Here's Ori. Throws up a wild shot that's no good, but Travis Knight is there. Now it's Glenn Rice. Contact. Ball out of bounds. No foul. When I spoke with the Pacers assistant, Rick Carlisle, before the game, he said that my biggest concern is our defensive rebounding and the Lakers going to the offensive board. Remember, Bob, in the first two rounds, the Lakers averaged almost 17 offensive rebounds a game against Portland, only nine. That's why Portland played them so well. They, they were able to shut down that offensive rebounding. Bryant comes off the bench for the last possession, replacing Fisher. Here's Brian Shaw, wanted to take the three. Best knocked it away. Now Best beats him to the ball and locks it before the buzzer. Very nearly a brilliant play by Best to end the half. Reggie Miller said the Laker fans soon enough would hate him after he shoots 0 for 7 in the first half. Well, as we start this third period, when we talked to Larry Bird yesterday, he talked about how important it was for his starting team to get off to a good start in the first quarter and the third. First quarter disaster, down 15. Now what you're going to see is Kobe Bryant once again against Mark Jackson, up the floor trying to pressure him, make them use clock to get into their offense slowly. Let's see if they can get Miller a quick shot here. Here's Reggie with the ball against Harper. He goes into Smiths for the jump hook on Shaq. That's good. Now he started the game the same way. Missed three of those shots before he finally got in rhythm. I think he's finding out that if he catches the ball in there and he takes his time, he can get that shot against Shaq. Smiths has scored eight, and it's a 10-point game. Into O'Neal, only Jackson there to help. He turns on Smiths and tips in his own miss. The double team is coming from the top, so Jack should not be allowed to spin baseline. Smiths has got to get over on that shoulder and not let him turn that way. 23 for O'Neal. Can Smiths answer? He can. It's down here on this defensive end. He has got to get his body up on Shaq, and although Shaq has the strength, he's got to know where his help is coming and send Shaq back to that person. Glenn Rice with that high dribble. Harper looking for O'Neal. Back to Harper. The fake on Jackson and the jumper. AC Green comes in for the rebound and left alone. He hits from the foul line. All five guys must rebound. You look at Larry Bird. He knows possession of the basketball is everything, especially when you're trailing. You got to get back in the game. You got to get some stops. Smiths again. He hit his first two. Finally misses his first shot of this third quarter. Harper swoops to the basket and there's a whistle. And Ron Harper goes end line to end line. Nobody stops the basketball. You got to step up. Now, Ron Harper in that first half had eight points. He was three of three, hit a three. Reggie Miller had none. But look at this. Who's stopping the basketball? You take the ball right to the front of the rim, and you finally get to the foul. But 
Indiana right now, their defense in this open court situation is really getting themselves in trouble, Bob. Foul was on Smith's his third. Ron Harper throughout the Portland series especially, and here in game one of this series against the Pacers, has been a sneaky scorer. He'll throw in some key points. He says with a smile that in six years with Phil Jackson, he has never called a play for me once. <laughs> That's when you got Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen and Tony Kukoc on your team. You're not going to get a lot of plays. That's why you have to learn to play within the offense and just make the shots when they're there. And then you play the tough defense, and that's why he has three rings going for his fourth. And now Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal and Glenn Rice. That's right. <laughs> they're not looking for Harper as a first, second, or third option. It's Rose for three and Shaq for the rebound. Lakers by 13. Kobe Bryant to the baseline. He finds Green open. The rebound taken by Reggie Miller. Smith from Jackson. Only four players in the history of the NBA have more career assists than Mark Jackson. And they're all Hall of Famers or future Hall of Famers. That was great vision. Looked right over his shoulder and saw Smith coming. Dropped the pass off nicely. And as Shaq makes his move in between Jackson and Smith's, there's an... All right, thanks, Bob. Phil Jackson, with just a subtle way of getting his team's attention, told them after that last time out, he says, Rick Smith has six points. We have five. We're starting out the wrong way. Bob? Thanks, Ahmad. Trying to rectify that situation. They go to O'Neal. His hook is no good, but there's Rice with the follow, and now it's all over when it winds up in Shaq's hands. Again, rebounding one of the strengths of the Lakers, one of the best rebounding teams in the league, one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the league. We talked about in the earlier two rounds what they did, and tonight they're starting to wear down and get on that offensive board. Pacers got to rebound. That was the Lakers' 10th offensive rebound. Smiths again. Dale Davis trying to keep it alive. And it's out of bounds to the Lakers. Into Shaq, who has 25. That one won't stay down, but the tip does. Two offensive rebounds by Ron Harper. You've got to block out. If you're going to get back in this game, you have got to get on those boards. That is one of the Lakers' strengths. Ron Harper has 11. Here's Miller on the move and a whistle, so he may get his first points at the foul line. Now, when the game started out, it was the Pacers on the boards. Now it is the Lakers. The jump hook, nobody blocks out. And you see Glenn Rice with the offense rebound doesn't finish, and there's Shaquille O'Neal all alone for the dunk. Next possession, it's Ron Harper with two tips to lay in. So four offensive rebounds already to start this third period. Almost unbelievably, that was Reggie Miller's first point. He hit 92% of his free throws this year. Second only to Jeff Hornacek in his last year with Utah. Hornacek hit 95%. Reggie is very subdued right now. He plays his best when he's got a chip on his shoulder. He's got to find something here to get upset about, get himself in his game emotionally. Well, you can tell there is not the same rivalry here, nothing approaching it, that Reggie experiences in Eastern Conference arenas. He's got the rebound off the Rice miss. In New York, when Reggie went to the line and got his first point on a free throw, there would have been sarcastic cheers. There was nothing here. Here's Smiths. Finds Miller. A two-point attempt. No good. Loose ball picked up by Bryant. Harper. And the foul will be on Jackson. Meanwhile, Reggie Miller is 0 for 8 after missing that last one. Here's Ahmad. All right, thanks, Bob. Just on that point you were talking about Reggie being the villain, I had a sit-down interview with him yesterday, and he told me that coming to L.A., he guaranteed the first game that the crowd would be with him, but before this season was over, they would hate him, and that's when he would, that's when he would rise. Bob? He is, of course, a Californian, high school in Riverside, college at UCLA. Well, rivalries are born at playoff time. We know that when the stakes are high and one team's going to advance and then one's going to be eliminated, that's where the rivalries occur. And that's where Reggie in New York and Reggie in Chicago and the different Reggie in Miami, the different places that, uh, that they've had to play in the East, 
when you only play a team twice, like they do now east-west, it's very difficult to have a rivalry unless you're meeting in the finals like the Celtics and the Lakers did so often. One of two for Harper. 14-point Los Angeles lead. Miller returns it to Smiths. In the lane, Davis fakes Shaq off his feet. And there's a whistle on the drive. A.C. Green commits his first. Dale Davis will be at the free throw line. He is actually the lesser of the two free throw shooters when you compare him to Shaq, at least in these playoffs. He hits the first. Look what he's done rebound-wise, though. This is what he has to do, but he also needs help. In the Eastern Conference Finals against New York, almost 14 rebounds a game. He has got to have help, though. He's got to get team rebounding because Rick Smith, for a big man, is not a good rebounder. Davis makes one of two. He's a career 53% free throw shooter, a fraction worse than Shaq when you compare their careers. Bryant Trout finishing up on Davis. He actually improved to 69% during the regular season, but he's fallen off to around 54 in the playoffs. Mark Jackson, blocked away by Bryant and taken by Rice. Into O'Neal in the paint, the hop, the jumper, Dale Davis grabbed it. Score the basket on the goaltending call. See what Jack is doing now, he's not even waiting for any kind of double team. He's catching the ball and going quickly, and the Pacers are not reacting to it. He's shooting the ball from about seven or eight feet. Lakers by 15 again. Mark Jackson for three. And he scored 11. Rice was bumped by Smiths, and what a terrible foul from Indiana's perspective. A touch foul way out on the perimeter as he picks up his fourth. Well, he has a very difficult time moving his feet. You see, he wants to get out there. He's got to take one more step. He can't get there. The Lakers know that. That's why they're involving him in these screen rolls. Kobe working on Reggie. Dumps it off to Shaq who was popped on the noggin by Smiths, and that's five. Well, Larry Bird says, look, we're behind. I've got to keep Rick Smiths on the floor. But again, that dribble penetration, Smith steps up, and he takes a poor angle to try to get back to Shaq. That's the kind of uh, shot that he's got to leave him alone. You can't foul him on one of those shots where he's trying to jackknife it and go to the other side of the basket. Sam Perkins now replaces Smiths. Perkins, the former Laker, who made the winning basket in the last finals victory for L.A., the opener in Chicago in 1991. After that, Michael Jordan and company won the next four in a row for their first of six championships. This is the first time L.A. has been back in the finals in nine years, and Perkins now wears the uniform of the Pacers. Here's Jim Gray. All right, Bob, Rick Smith's now on the bench. I had a chance to talk to him at halftime, and I asked him what he was going to do differently in the second half for his team. He says, there's nothing we can do differently. It is basically just pretty much impossible to stop this guy. Never quite heard that type of a concession from a guy who's out on the court competing. Bob? What we've seen more or less backs up his point of view, and Miller has his first field goal on his ninth attempt. Well, see, he got to the free throw line, got a couple free throws, and that's what you do. You get yourself to the line, now start being more aggressive. Maybe he can get some rhythm. Pacers to within 10 now. Kobe Bryant thinks about a three. Jackson's on it. Out to Harper. His three-pointer. Shaq's got the rebound, and the follow is good off the glass. He was just playing a spectacular play. Perkins was in front of him. That was just great athletic ability by Shaq to go right over the top of him, take it away from him, and shoot the ball right in the basket. 
Gail Davis out to Miller. Long three. Jumping out on him is Harper to block it, but he fouled him. And Reggie's going to get three free throws. You know, what Harper was going to say is, you know, Reggie kicked his leg out. But Harper got him up on the wrist before Reggie made contact with his leg. Reggie loves to kick that leg out when he shoots the ball. Again, he got to the free throw. And I watch him now as he sort of kicks that leg out. But Harper gets him three free throws here now for Reggie Miller. So once again, as a player, if you're struggling from the field, get to the line and work yourself back into a rhythm. He's virtually automatic from the strike. And he's three for three tonight. And, and Bob, you talked about it a while ago. Reggie Miller can be, as Phil Jackson said, dormant for two and a half or three periods and then explode and throw up a 20-point quarter. So I think Larry Bird looks up here and says, as badly as we've played, almost five minutes to go in the third quarter, it's going to be under double digits here if uh, Reggie makes this down to a nine-point lead. When he scored 41 in the fifth and deciding game in round one against Milwaukee at 18 in the fourth. He got 34 in the game six clincher at Madison Square Garden. Half of them, 17 in the fourth. Kobe Bryant changed his shot in midair and missed it. They can cut it to seven with a basket here, or six with a three. That's what Jackson wants, but it won't stay down. If you're the Lakers, you got to go back to Shaq. Smith's on the bench right now. Perkins can't handle him. He's got his own way in there. Don't go away from what's working. Glenn Rice turns and misses off the glass into the hands of Jackson. Pacers on the run. Jalen Rose to the hoop. Jackson tried to come up with the offensive rebound. The ball's out of bounds, and the Lakers will have it. How big would that basket have been? I would have cut it to seven. If I'm telling you, if I'm Phil Jackson, he just pointed out, he said, throw the ball into Shaq. Two possessions in a row. Kobe tries to score. Then Glenn Rice. Go into your big man. They can't stop him. Shaq's doing it all. Rice is one of eight in the game, and Kobe is scoreless since the first quarter. It's off O'Neal's hands, and on the turnover, Jackson has it for Indiana. Sam Perkins can't hit the three. That rebound was O'Neal's 14th to go with 29 points. You know, and Perkins is 0 for 4 from the floor. He needs to make some shots to drag Shaq out of that lane. Kobe Bryant misses what would have been a two-pointer. Again, Indiana with a chance to cut into the lead. Jackson up and under, got it, plus the foul. Well, Phil Jackson cannot be happy with this Indiana run, and Larry Bird has to be ecstatic. They've been able to do a nice job of keeping the ball away from Shaq. More importantly, they've rebounded the ball, and they've got some early offense. Jalen Rose missed a layup, but they come right back. And the nice little up and under by Mark Jackson, who's having a terrific game. He is keeping the Pacers close here to the Lakers, especially as they come back in this third period. Point play and a six-point game. Indies on an 11-2 run right now. Sometimes the Lakers get disinterested if things come too easy. Pacers right now are pushing them a little bit. Let's see how they respond. Shaw just in, gives it to Shaq, and Shaq's shot was partially blocked, but still goes. Win in trouble, go to the MVP. He now has 31. It wasn't clean, but it dropped. Miller off the dribble against Shaw. Running one-hander won't go, but the follow is there for Dale Davis. See, I like what Reggie's doing right now, though. He's really attacking. He tried to jump in and get the foul on Shaw. Kobe thought about a three. Now off the dribble. Gives it to A.C. Green and Shaw. Shaq is double team. Shaw into the lane. Blocked out of there by Dale Davis. What a job he's doing in the last several minutes. Here he is again. And Dale Davis, who made the All-Star team this year for the first time in his nine-year career, has made this a four-point game as the clock ticks down toward two minutes to play in the third. I've seen a lot of pride in the Pacers come out right now. 
Shaw for three. Can't silence the Pacers. And look, they're off and running, trying to push the pace on the uh, Lakers right now, getting him into a transition game. Mark Jackson with the reverse. They're within two. Well, you know what Larry Bird told Jim Gray at halftime? He said, I like our position. I thought he was trying to pull a little side job on his team, but he must have done something we did and went right back in the game. Kobe Bryant against Jalen Rose. Got it. There is no defensive scheme to stop that when he takes you one on one with moves of that sort. Exactly right. Jalen Rose couldn't get it back. Bryant has the rebound. Shaw from the head of the key. And Portland saying, where were those the other night when we needed those misses? Bryant Shaw cannot find one tonight. Portland's still trying to figure out why this game won isn't in Portland. And why the Lakers aren't the ones watching on TV. Here's Miller on the drive. Shaq with the block. some breathing room. Back up by six. Reggie is taking one dribble too many. He's got to pull up before Shaq gets over. They're running him right into the shot blocking of Shaq, and he's really taking away his effectiveness. Shot clock and game clock virtually identical. And Jack Neese says, hold on. The clock actually stopped here. He's probably going to have to take some time off of it. I looked up, and the clock had stopped moving. Gives us a chance to note this. You were talking about Brian Shaw, who had made seven of eight from three-point range. He's 0 for 5 overall in this game. And the Pacers sharpshooter, Reggie Miller, 1 for 11. If you said Shaq's going to have 31 points, Reggie's going to be down uh, 1 for 11, and you're only going to be down by 6, possibly 4 at the end of the third. You can take that. And as Mark Jackson takes it into the paint, there's a Laker foul. It's on. They changed the last basket. They had put it up on the board as a three by Brian Shaw. They changed it to a two. So good news for the Pacers. Their deficit is six rather than seven as we start the fourth quarter. Shaw from Shaq. O'Neal has a nickname for everything. He's taken to calling a play like that the Shaw Shaq redemption <laughs> when he hooks up with his old Orlando teammate. Best. Shaw for the rebound. Rex Fox in the front court. Yeah, to O'Neal, who now has 33. And it's a 10-point game when less than a minute of playing time ago it was four. This is where Larry Bird has to be very careful and use his timeouts wisely. We know the Lakers like the surge. It's a big shot here by Reggie. And it's an air ball. Reggie now 1 of 13 from the field. Now, if the Lakers score here, that'll be six unanswered points. They'll double their lead. I think Bird's going to need a timeout here. He can't let this lead slip away as they climb back into the game. He's got he's to keep his team close. Reggie Miller hearing it now from the crowd as O'Neal fires the jumper that's short. And Derek McKee takes the rebound. Into the paint. Almost lost the dribble. Travis Best. Reggie, four seconds to shoot. Perkins camped out for a three and got it. Well, he needed that. Sam Perkins is such a big part of this team because he's a big man who actually shoots more three-pointers than he does two, and he will stretch the defense. Shot clock winding down. Big possession. Why O'Neal led all NBA centers in assists this year. He comes 
out to meet Perkins to deny him the shot. So it's Crozier sliding in against two defenders, and one of them fouled him. And Indiana won some big road games in this postseason, closing out both Philadelphia and the Knicks on the road in Game 6 affairs. Well, Bob, when you look at the finals, you know it's a 2-3-2 format as we look at the best home records in the league. 2-3-2, so if you get down 2-0, there's never been a team that won all three games at home. So in order to win the finals as a team that doesn't have the home court, you're almost going to have to win here twice. That's why it's so important to try to get a split in those first two games. Crozier splits two free throws. Laker lead is eight. O'Neal can't make it ten. And here come the Pacers just hanging around. Not out of it yet. Travis Best with the ball. He usually plays the fourth quarter. But Larry Bird says he's been known to go with a hot hand. Play the guy who's playing better. Well, Jackson is playing better tonight. Here's Crozier. This guy's playing great. And he brings them to within six. Mark Jackson, who's sitting, has 18 points on six of eight field goals and five assists. As they try to get it into O'Neal, there's a whistle from Terry Durham. Number two on Perkins. Smiths has five and has been on the bench for a while. And after that poor first quarter, Indiana actually has played very well. They got down 15 in that first period, actually down as much as 17 or 18. They fought back, and they're two possessions away from tying right now. Fox, the fake, and he draws the foul as Miller lands on him. That's Reggie's first. Rick Fox tried to get the three-point shot up after he felt the contact, but couldn't quite do it. So it'll be sideline out of bounds. It will not be a shooting foul. Lakers have led by as many as 17 on two different occasions. The lead now is down to six. Now the thing that Larry Bird's got to worry about this lineup is they've got to rebound the ball. They've got a small team in there right now. Perkins takes the rebound on O'Neal's miss. Reggie Miller, who's one for 13 in this game. Here's Crozier. Perkins thought about a three, gives it to McKee. He fires. That could have cut the lead in half, but Shaw takes the rebound. They go deep to O'Neal, back to Shaw, around the perimeter of Fisher. O'Neal over Crozier for the rebound. He powers back up and scores. That's what I was talking about, the rebound. You see Shaquille O'Neal now with 35, but they've got a small team out there. Sam Perkins has got to try to get his body on Shaq, but he just overpowered him. McKee, Crozier, Miller, Best, they've got to rebound the ball. Best behind Perkins' screen. The rebound to O'Neal, his 15th. Shaq is having a tremendous game, dominating both ends of the floor. Let's see if they go back inside him one more time here. 35 and 15 for Shaq with three blocks thrown in. Fox. And the Lakers up the lead to 10. It's like Indiana is playing uphill the whole night. They get it Bob, to within six. McKee's shot makes it a three-point game. He misses it. It's back to ten. It's hard to play from behind the whole night. Especially on the road. And now Fisher takes it away from Best. He tried to hit Shaq, but Perkins cut in front and took it back. Sam Perkins drives around O'Neal. Offensive foul. What great recognition by Reggie Miller's worst shooting game this season came in late November at Seattle when he was so everything he's done is going to the basket. You've seen very little where he's been able to get those feet set and shoot an outside jump shot. Chris Mullen, who didn't play at all in the six games against New York, is in for the first time in the finals, wearing number 17 for the Pacers. Deep to O'Neal, he has 37 points. I mean, now Dale Davis is strong, but Shaq just sort of just walked him across the lane, caught it about four feet, and jump hooked it in the basket. Coming up on six minutes to play in the game, Los Angeles by a dozen. 
Jalen Rose on the drive. Can't cut it to 10. O'Neal with another rebound. How about Shaq? You put up that time and just push Rose out of the way to get that rebound. He passes out of the double to Fox, and one pass too many. He was looking for Ori. They turn it over. Now, Mullen is in there for one reason, to make some shots. Crozier, who's been making them all night. Wow, this guy. Now, remember, he had 22 in game one of that New York series, and then went ice cold the rest of the way. Off to a great start here tonight. With 16. O'Neal again. 39 points. And watching this makes you appreciate the post defense of Portland. Dunleavy had a fine scheme, but he also had the personnel to execute that scheme. That's a great, great point. When you got Scottie Pippen, you got Rasheed Wallace, those guys running down into double and triple teams, they made life miserable for Shaq. Right now, he feels so comfortable playing against that Pacer defense. The jumper by Best was halfway down and popped out. Lakers looking to put the Pacers away with a run here. It's Fox. The three-pointer establishes a 15-point lead. Here's Miller. Dumping it into Smith, who's back playing with five fouls, and he immediately turns it over, throwing it right to Fox. And I think it's important for the Lakers in the last four and a half minutes of this game. They're going to win the game. They cannot let Reggie Miller get a couple field goals. Make him go home with this taste in his mouth. Don't let him get going. Here's Robert Orr. Rebound. Smith came back in for 30 seconds, committed a turnover, and then a sixth foul. He played 20 minutes, scored 12 points, had five rebounds. Miller for three, way off, and a whistle on the rebound. He is now one for 14. And there's nothing worse than being on the road, having a kind of game that Reggie's having, and then having to be in that city for two more days before you can play a game. That's all you're going to hear on TV, the radio, the newspapers. But Reggie Miller, we know one thing, he will bounce back. He's done it so many times before. Here's Dale Davis's jumper. Making it worse, though, for Reggie. This is his hometown. He told us yesterday, I'm not taking calls from any friends. It's family only. Family gets the tickets. All other requests get a deaf ear. I'm focusing on one thing and one thing only, these finals. Bryant finds Fox, and now Shaw for three. Crozier with the rebound, battling Shaq for it. Here's Reggie Miller on the drive. Flips it up with the left hand and comes up empty. One for 15. Now this is where they want to use clock and stay organized and look at that oh. Yep, Shaw Shaq right there. There's your Shaw Shaq redemption. Now that started on Orlando when these guys played together for the Magic. They do that as well as anybody in the NBA. Jalen Rose quiets the crowd, but only a bit. Shaquille O'Neal has been unbelievable tonight, and John Sally waiting to check in the game. O'Neal got it deep, and they found him. The basket doesn't count. Shaquille O'Neal just feels the rhythm and rolls right to the basket. How about that finish? One hand going away from the basket, 7 feet 1, 330 pounds. The MVP, the look in his face, the man wants a championship to finish this season. And Shaw grabs the rebound. Well, the Lakers 
Rutgers showed no after effects of that amazing come from behind win against Portland. I think the biggest concern was were they going to have a hangover? Shaq did not let that happen tonight. He dominated from start to finish. Big game one victory here for them, Bob. Bryant misses a three. Ball up over the backboard. 26 seconds left. Well, the Pacers battled back. Were down by 17 twice. They got to within four, but the Lakers answered. Well, remember in the fourth period, McKee had a three that would have made it a three-point game. And there's some of the spectacular ability they show on Jonathan Bender coming out of high school. Now, he's a guy that down the road is going to be a terrific player, but not ready yet to help this team. And what high school is he from? Picky you in high school in Mississippi. Bryant dribbles and waits for the buzzer. There it is. The Lakers take game one. 104.